listen to a pretty all right podcast about wrestling, do ya? Well, the natural lad, Jeff Swag, has said time and time again that there's only one podcast that's the most decent and the most all right in the industry today. And that's who? It's the Game Radio Wrestling Podcast. Welcome, one, welcome all to what is likely the most decent and most all rightest podcast you've ever listened to about professional wrestling. It's the Game Rage Wrestling Podcast. My name's Josh. I'm here today with Adam. Yes. And today, we're going to talk about how I fucking called it. And D'Lo Brown. No, I'm just kidding. And D'Lo Brown. <laughs> uh, but before we get into that, if you want to listen to all our other shit, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at GameRageMagazine. You can go to Twitter slash X at GameRageMag there. You can follow us on YouTube, YouTube, YouTube Game Rage Magazine. Furthermore, if you want to follow Adam, you can go follow him at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram. And you can go listen to the All Gas No Trash podcast, which is the Game Rage music show. It's fucking great. You'll love it. It's the greatest show on the planet. You'll love it. It's the greatest music. I don't know why I keep doing Trump, but whatever. Uh, maybe because I won't be able to do it much longer if he doesn't win the election, then, you know, we'll never see him again, probably. But anyways, Frank does the anime syndicate, because if you like wrestling, well, actually, that's not true. You might not like anime if you don't like wrestling. No, I don't, I don't, I don't know. If, yeah, for yeah. those of you out there that also like anime, you can go watch the anime syndicate podcast at anime underscore syndicate underscore podcast on Instagram and wherever podcasts are available, anime syndicate. Uh, just go check all our shit out. Go to YouTube and you can see all of our bullshit because we have plenty of fucking podcasts for you to listen to. Hundreds of episodes for you to fucking delve into. At this point, I'm still surprised we've gotten this far and also have accumulated hours and hours of uh, episodes. It's it's fucking astonishing. It is fucking astonishing. And you can go listen to the Butt Fuck Nowhere show that's going to come out on uh, fucking September 1st. Because uh, that'll be that'll be the one where we talk about the numbers if we hit if we hit the fucking mark this month. <laughs> oh god! Um, and uh, basically, also, uh, what I what I'm actually going to do is I didn't even do the numbers for like the episode numbers for August, like how many we made. So I still have to count those up, and then I have to I'm gonna do or no I'm not sorry August July I didn't do July so I'm gonna do July and August at the end of this month so we can have a total of like how many episodes we've made so far. It's it's I think it's well over fucking 300. It's like. This is a lot, but in just a year, in just a year, man, nobody in just a fucking year. Nobody does the amount of work that we do. Nobody does. On a weekly basis. On a weekly fucking basis. But anyways, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com. So, wrestling. I had said a while back, I think it was sometime in July, or end of June or something like that, when Fanatics invited... All the fucking top brass from like WW or, or what is it called? Uh, the fucking the assholes that own them. Total knockout. Yeah. Because it was them and some people from like UFC that went too. And so one Fuck. of the things that I did learn. Fuck. Yeah. One of the things I did learn is, is Fanatics does have a deal. They've had a deal in place with WWE since like 2022. It wasn't what it is now. It, was, it isn't the new deal that they've made. Full, they were, blow, full blown aids. Yeah, well, so they were making things that Fanatics was allowed to sell that were WWE branded on the Fanatics website. Licensed. Licensed, yes. Fanatics now, I said, man, watch. They go to this fucking party, there's gonna, they're gonna do co- they're gonna do cocaine off of hookers' asses or some shit, and then they're gonna be like, yo man, what if you guys let us do all your merchandise? And lo and behold, that is now the new deal where essentially Fanatics will be branding and creating all of the merchandise for WWE. I hope that does not include championship belts because it would be a real shame 
if Fanatics was making, I hope it's just clothing. Like I haven't found the details of the of the deal fully online. It's probably mostly apparel. If yeah, not all and I apparel. don't think that the deal is even like fully finalized, but like it is. Like it's like they're gonna do it because Fanatics is doing it for the MLB. They're doing it for the NHL now. They're doing it for what are they doing for the NBA? No, I don't think the NBA is part of that. So. Did they get the NFL? Too? They got the they didn't get the NFL yet, right? I think they they have the NFL yet. Yeah, okay, so, fuck. Yeah. So they've got three of the four major sports in the United States, therefore the world. Um, now they've got professional wrestling and likely UFC to go because you know TKO is not fucking gonna just do a deal with WWE. Like they're gonna make it a package deal with the UFC. Fucking hate it. And. I will say that Fanatics gear is fucking trash. It's gonna, you buy a CM Punk shirt, it's gonna disintegrate the moment you step out. The sun will peek over the hills and your shirt will get just the slightest bit of a fucking ultraviolet ray and boom, your whole shirt's on fire. Yep, now you have no shirt. And you and you had the privilege of paying $32 for that fucking shirt. Um, that's the other thing too is, Fanatics prices are ass too. They're, they're very expensive and I don't understand how this is a good deal for anybody, other than them too, of course, because they're gonna make fucking a truckload of money. Well, and people are stupid enough to pay for it. Yeah, uh, I've been reading reviews on the Fanatics stuff that just already exists that they were licensing to like make, and everybody says it's literal trash. All it the is. WWE stuff is trash. Like it is the worst shit ever. They use the worst quality fucking shirts. Um, the shirts fucking like they fit weird. Like they're they're like this weird shape or some shit, and I'm just like ugh. That's terrible. So I am not, I am not happy about this. Also, I did find out that since I think early this year, Fanatics was slowly taking over the merchandise <laughs> handling at live events for WWE. Oh. So they were also running all the merch booths and all that shit. Which, so they were already in bed with each other, so now it's just solidifying that yeah. all apparel, all fucking items that they could sell are just going to be done through fanatics. fanatics yeah, basically. Everything made, made, made and produced. Yeah, well, not here, but yeah. And I'm sure they really were just like, hey, guys, we're kind of already doing some of this stuff, but like, look at the deal we have with the MLB. Look at the deal we have with the fucking NFL and, and, and the NHL. Oh, man, why don't, why don't we do a deal with you guys? And they were like... Cool, thanks for inviting us to this kick-ass party where we just fucking did a bunch of coke and, like, fucking, you know, fucked hookers in pools. This is great, you guys. <sighs> Hooray! It's the worst. It just... If there was ever a definition for a monopoly for a business to have be the cornerstone for apparel for all major sports with the exception of basketball, if I'm not mistaken... Yeah. Oh, man, it doesn't get any worse than this. And, uh, yeah, why wouldn't they take the leap... And it's not even much of a leap. They knew it was going to be a fucking cash cow for them. Uh, they're the corner. WWE, for all intents and purposes, is wrestling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Main, mainstream wrestling altogether. All so, uh, I mean, it makes sense for them. Not so much for us because, you know, we, the consumers, will probably buy it. I think the shirts at most should cost like 20 bucks, 15, 20 bucks for what you. But. Those days are gone. Yeah. Now we're paying $35 for a fucking... For a fucking shirt, man. So with some graphics on it. Uh, that's terrible. It pretty much guaranteed... Not that I ever was going to buy any WWE shit to begin with, but... Uh, yeah, true. Now it just guarantees I won't. Yeah, now I'm definitely not buying any WWE shit. That's for sure. I got to fucking... I don't know. I got to go on eBay and find the old shit from the Attitude Era. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I... I think this is bad. This is definitely bad. Um, WWE doesn't care because they're getting paid up front for all this shit and they don't have to make it anymore. Mm -hmm. So they're like, yo, we're getting a guaranteed fucking set amount of money and we're getting percentage of whatever they're selling. So like, fuck it. Let them do it. They're doing all the work, taking all the risk. So I thought the venues were the ones that generally they would be handling that kind of stuff. But now it looks like the no. WWE's going to be including in their deals with the arenas like hey by the way we're bringing in our own staff for you know which you're allowed to do that there are plenty of of deals where the arenas don't have their own stuff and you gotta you gotta hire or bring in your own merch booth people or whatever 
they do offer it a lot of them. Most of them offer it as a service. And then they're just like, oh yeah, like you give us 20%. Yeah. yeah. We, we'll just take 20% off the top. And then they would just raise their prices 20%. So then nobody's, nobody's nope. losing money. Yeah. Nobody's losing. Yeah. So, which is fucking insane, which is why shit buying shit at events is always much more expensive. It's to cover the percentage that they're going to have to pay. But it's also right there. That's why you do it. That's why you buy it. Like, I mean, that's just what you do. Because for the event we went to, they had exclusive yep. WWE live tour Los Angeles shirts. But I, I don't remember what it was. It was like CM Punk or something. It was something exclusive to CM Punk. Like, yeah. That he was in Los Angeles or some shit. And I don't remember what the price. They didn't, I don't know if they actually said it was the like price. 40, I think they were but $45. When you went out and we went, went to go see it, it was fucking expensive, expensive as fuck. Yeah, fun. I think it was like $45 for that shirt. Yeah. And I was like, Jesus Christ. And motherfuckers were waiting in line. Mm -hmm. Shut up and take my money. And I'm like, yeah, fuck. I'm not paying $45 for that shirt. I will say, I do want to go to another live event again. Like, it doesn't have to be like a pay-per-view or whatever. Like, that live event was pretty fun. I'd like to maybe get better seats than we had. This was an impromptu last-minute fucking decision. So that's why we ended up getting the fucking nosebleed seats. But um, I will say, at the Coliseum or whatever, those those seats weren't bad. I mean, mm. or the Forum. I mean, not the Coliseum. <laughs> the Kia Forum. So, I don't know. Whenever they come back out here again, I'd say let's go fucking see another show. See what happens. Maybe we'll get to see some fucking crazy. I, I can boo Cody Rhodes this time. <laughs> so. uh, I think I think house shows are... Uh, I mean, nobody's doubting that it's cool to see pivotal story moments within a Raw or SmackDown, right? Yeah. To be, to be at the SmackDown... That Roman Reigns appears in his four month absence and yeah, return or whatever. That's cool. But I think house shows are cool because it just hits all the the beats that you would want. Yeah. Uh, you probably mostly would get to see everybody that you want. And I mean, shit, man. I didn't even think we were gonna get a steel cage match, the first no, fucking man. match. That shit was crazy. That was fucking crazy. Open with a goddamn steel cage match. Um, I do want to go, I don't want to go fucking back to LA. I'd rather go to fucking Ontario if they're going to fucking do it there. Mm. If that's an option, because man. They've, they've done SmackDown and Raw's there. Yeah, at the, uh, the what is it, the Toyota, Toyota Center? Center? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, fuck. If they go back there, whatever the next time is, we should fucking go, because, and listen, I'll even give AEW a chance if they fucking come back out here, which I still can't believe they've only done like one fucking show out here because the Young Bucks are from fucking Rancho Cucamonga. I think it, it's not cost efficient for them. It's like most of their audience is in... Is on the East Coast. West of the, or East of the Mississippi or some bullshit. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, so that's why they don't come out here. And also, I don't think... I don't know how well they've, they've sold when it comes to regular... Uh, regular, like regular programming. Visit, uh, yeah, what is it? Uh, Dynamite? Like Dynamite and shit. But the pay-per-views seem to do... Yeah, they seem they to sell, do pretty well. Sell, sold out for that shit. Um, yeah. What, <laughs> Fuck, man. They're not coming out here for anything major. For, for what? For the rest of the year. Like, for their pay-per-views. Uh-huh. They're all on the East Coast. There's one that's going to be in Wa Wrestle Dream in Tacoma, Washington. But that's fucking Washington State. I don't even go up there. Everything else is on the East Coast. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then as far as, like, uh, just looking at Collision and Dynamite or whatever, South Dakota... Wisconsin, Illinois, Illinois, Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, New York City, Pittsburgh, PA, fucking Ohio, okay, Spokane, Washington, Tacoma, Washington, and then fuck Newark, New Jersey. Well, that's, wait a minute, October, oh, they don't have any dates for October listed. Okay, well, that's probably why. Maybe, maybe when they come to Washington, they'll fucking, uh, oh my God, I can't believe this. AEW is <laughs> they're doing all in in Texas next year. Where at Austin? Uh, Arlington at the Globe Life Field. Oh, okay, fucking Texas Rangers. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That might be interesting. Yeah, I don't know, but anyways, um, let's just see real quick where the WWE live events are at. If there's any recently coming here or soon to be coming here, WWE I'm, I'm sure it's going to be like April or something. April, May for Los Angeles. Oh, Sam shit. Monday, September 23rd, Ontario, California. Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw. Yep. And then, uh, let's see. We're, okay, so that time period of September, they're going to be out here. So let's see. 
September. Did you have anything else to mention for this particular episode? I don't think so off the top of my head. What, did you have anything else to go on for this? I mean... Uh, fuck, man. That stable with Karrion Cross and the Authors of Pain. Yeah. I think that's getting blown up. Yeah. Because there was like a after stage segment with uh, Karrion Cross. He's like, uh, his manager or whoever the fuck she is, if the love interest, I don't, I don't know. I don't know who she is. Uh, yeah. She's like, oh, Karrion Cross, you are... A parasite to things you know how to rot them from the inside and i think it was alluding to carrying cross uh possibly moving away from that would i don't know the final testament dude i mean yeah their intro was basically the nwo with the flickering black and white and shit yeah yeah but it never had any substance man it never fucking had any substance and i'm glad it's going away and I don't think they had any traction as far as like the every fucking segment that they were involved with, man. I I couldn't believe my ears that it just falls deftly on like the audience. It, it's yeah, man. it's fucking dead. It um, is, and I think I think we're gonna end up with that situation with the Wyatt Six. I you have your gripes with Cody Rhodes, man. I have my fucking gripes with. With the Wyatt Six? The Wyatt Six. Um, especially with uh, Bo Dallas. I forgot. I don't even know if he's just going to be called Bo Dallas or Windham or whatever the fuck his actual name is. Uh, or if he's just going to go by Uncle Howdy. But, man, watching him do the Sister Abigail, it's like watching fucking uh, when Michael Jordan had his son. I don't know if he was actually called Michael Jordan Jr. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know this is probably apples and oranges but it's like when you have a predecessor or um is predecessor the right word or is predecessor mean the a person? progeny like a like a like a kid somebody that comes afterwards right somebody yeah. that follows your your uh tutelage yeah yeah okay like an like an uh a protege a pro that's the that's, that's the word, by the right? word yeah, yeah yeah um man watching him do the sister abigail it's like night and fucking day between him and Bray Wyatt? Him and Bray Wyatt. I'm like, I this isn't going to work, dude. I don't think this is going to work, but I know they're going to try to work it for the next year or two. We're going to get Eric Rowan and probably Dexter Loomis as the tag titles, tag team champions for Raw at some point. Yeah. Uh, but like, what, what, what do you think is like the, the most realistic place that Bo Dallas could end up as a singles competitor. <clears throat> I this, think I don't think yes, we're being shown that this group is potent in some way. Yeah. But I just don't see how he's going to end up with a world title in either brand. No. Uh, at best he's like your mid-card champion. At best, I think that's the ceiling for him is being either U.S. or Intercontinental Champion. But the problem, again, like I said, now people people love to fucking disagree with me on the internet about this, but listen, you guys are entitled to your opinion, even though you're fucking completely wrong. Yeah. You can't tell me that a stable whose top guy is only good enough to become a mid-card level champion, mm -hmm. you can't tell me that they're dangerous. They're dangerous maybe to mid-carders, but anyone above the mid-card level, fucking, they can't do shit to them. So, if, if you're not a threat, what's the point of even fucking being around? It's kind of the point of a stable is to eventually get to the point where you are a threat to the title picture or you are a threat to the main fucking thing that's going on. You know what I'm saying? Being just a threat to the tag division. and uh, Think about this, okay? If Evolution only fucking got to the IC title and then the tag titles... Would they have would, would they have been what they were? Absolutely not, because they're not you're not really a threat. You're just kind of like me. Well, you guys are running the low end shit. Cool. You guys all had you guys were nobodies, and you had to band together to run the low end side of the card. But there you that, go. But that also says a lot about the C stable itself, because it's like for Finn Balor. I'm gonna get on the Judgment Day yeah, bullshit yeah. again, but it's like the power scaling thing for me. Yeah, is that. Okay, Nikki Cross couldn't cut it as a singles competitor, so you throw her in this Wyatt Six thing. Uh, Bo Dallas had to be shoved in that B squad, whatever, with fucking um, 
Mr. Per, was it the goal? Uh, oh, uh, the guy that Paul Heyman was managing. Yeah. Um, Axel. Axel wrote, no, Axel something. something. It was Kurt, yeah. Curtis, Curtis Axel. Yeah, Curtis Axel. Axel, there you go. Yeah. Um, if but, I'm not mistaken. Uh, <coughs> but those stables that everybody just needs to be in this group to get ahead. I'm like, man, well, I know for sure fucking Damian Priest and Ray Ripley, which is why they're on the outs of the Judgment Day, because believe it or not, Damian Priest is something of a star now. Yeah. Ray Ripley was always that to begin with. Right. So she outgrew that group. Yeah. And now Finn Balor is stuck with the idiots, like basically. Yeah, the rejects or whatever. And It's sad because it's like, if you wanted Finn Balor to seem like a legitimate singles competitor, you know he's not going to win by legitimate means because he's still in this fucking group. And Carlito, if he's ever in a singles match, oh, you're going to have the fucking Judgment Day come in and do something. Liv Morgan can't square up with Rhea Ripley one-on-one. So you have the Judgment Day fucking hop in and do that shit. This Wyatt thing is going to be the exact same thing on a worse fucking scale, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I agree with that. I think that they're going to be garbage. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be a waste of everybody's fucking time. I, I, and I, I'm i actually kind of curious to find out what happens with Dominic Mysterio because he's kind of a hot heel right now with yeah. the betrayal of uh, Ray Ripley and all that shit. But his hatred from the crowd, or rather the hatred from the crowd, is at fever level. But I wonder how long it's going to last because even Rey Mysterio has made a comment that his son has now superseded him and that, you know, he was kind of concerned that it's difficult for somebody to follow the legacy of somebody like uh, Rey Mysterio or any, like, wrestler that is second or third generation, right? Yeah. If the Judgment Day is broken up, where do you fucking put Rey Mysterio? I think he ends up in the fucking IC title picture at best. Yeah, I don't that, think Dominic Mysterio is going to fucking be a world heavyweight champion one day. I don't think that's a thing. Yeah, I see title. I feel like he's being protected by the Judgment Day. Like, everything's going fucking great with this drama and bullshit. Yeah. And he's with Liv Morgan. But what happens when you strip away Liv Morgan? Is Dominic Mysterio all that interesting? I don't know. I don't know. May- well, that's the thing. Maybe he will be. He's never really had a chance to prove that. So, I guess we'll find out. But anyways, oh, by the way, uh, fuck, we are not going to Monday Night Raw in goddamn fucking uh, Ontario. You want to know why, how much tickets are? 300 bucks. Yeah, for the nosebleeds. The literal, like, the row we sat in when we went to the fucking Kia Forum. It's like $326. Are you serious? Yeah, that's fucking insane. In Per ticket. That's per ticket. I thought, oh, man, maybe because I put four tickets on there, and I was like, oh, maybe it's 300 and fucking whatever, like, for all four of them. That's a pretty good deal. Mm-hmm. Nah, it's, that's per ticket. Imagine... Imagine AEW, it's like 300 bucks for the front row. <laughs> yeah, basically, it is. Non-camera they, I side. Think, I don't think they can give those tickets away, like, yeah. for AEW. But, fuck, I'd go if I got free tickets to go. And also, I was thinking, because they do, there's, like, smaller independent shows that they do around here all the time. Okay. I was thinking we sh- maybe we should go to a couple. Dude, just to see I, I was what telling like. you that uh, just down the freeway, like, heading towards San Diego, mm-hmm. Devon Dudley was doing some kind of... I don't know if he was the one running the independent promotion, mm. but it was him. Uh, well, it was Devon Dudley and some other bullshit, but that already passed. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then D'Lo Brown, I think, was yeah. He was right here in Corona. He was at the UFC gym running some event or whatever. Yeah, some and I was like, event. "Fuck!" I, we missed it because it was on a day that like I couldn't go or something. Because uh, I wanted to fucking go. I was like, "Dude, I would love to see D'Lo Brown just I, to fucking I, see it." You know? I feel like if we w- approached him. It'd be like every other experience that we've had. Oh, that's gonna cost you, buddy. Like, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> even with their best days behind them, it'd just be some stupid bullshit. And we're like, man, fuck why this. did we? Why did we yeah. even bother? I'd be like, man, you know what? They, well, then we could come on here and say, man, fuck D'Lo Brown. All right, like, <laughs> <laughs> you're a money grubbing whore. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that we should start trying to go to some of these little independent things just to, just to fucking see. Mm. And then you know, watch somebody die. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> um, and then if D- and if we go see Dilo Brown, he's like, "All right, you want to talk to me? It's gonna cost you." And I was like, "And I was gonna be like, hey, Devon, 
you want to listen to a pretty all right podcast about <laughs> wrestling, do you? Uh, and then he would say, what? <laughs> yeah. <he> would, <laughs> and then he'd do that fucking head shake thing get, that he does. Get that, get the fucking table. Get the, get the table. Yeah. So anyways, all right. Do you have anything else for this episode? Uh, yeah, I, I just, I wish companies would just not be in bed with each other to yeah, it's pretty, eliminate pretty any kind of competition. Uh, especially for fanatics to just straight up own sports in general as far as apparel goes. And now they have, now they're in bed with the WWE or have been so. And they just now, they're basically copulating each other, uh, you know, finagling or rather fingering each other in the butthole and all kinds yeah. of shit. It's, it's, uh, what a travesty, dude! For for us consumers that have to deal with shitty products for for the foreseeable future. True. I. I this is just gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. But you know what? As bad as it's gonna be, I don't think it'll be as bad as Cody Rhodes wrestling and mic work on a on a week to week basis. <laughs> Sorry, you just I had just, to shove that in there, didn't you? Every, I'm t- I told you, every week, I got to fucking get at least one shot in on Cody Rhodes. Who knows? Maybe enough of the Cody crybabies will fucking send it to him enough, and maybe he'll just be, like, so charitable and want to fucking help us out. And come, on, and come on and do a phone interview with us. And then I can tell him to his face why he's a piece of shit and why <laughs> I hate him. I'll tell you right now, I'll be honest with you. If that would ever happen... I'm not gonna be nice to him, all right? I'm gonna be an asshole. I'm gonna tell him I think his wrestling is fucking weak and I think that he fucking needs to go to the gym and fucking work out more. <laughs> really, he needs to do steroids and work out more. That's what he should be doing. He's not He's not giving us the respect we deserve. Yeah. He needs to step on the gas. All right. But anyways, I just wanted to let you know now, on the record, that if that ever, as unlikely as that is, it's probably never gonna happen. But if it does, <laughs> I'm not fucking backing down and I'm not gonna be, oh, thank you so much for good. I'm gonna be like, hey man, what the fuck's wrong with you? Why are you such an asshole? Why are you tarnishing your family's legacy in this way? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that'll sit real well with him. He's actually, he's a funny guy, so I mean, he probably would think it's hilarious. That's why he'd agree to do it, I yeah, feel like. well. Anyways, if you like Cody Rhodes, don't, just block yourself right now. Don't even fucking listen anymore. I'm sorry. Then you, you would love the anime podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you love Cody Rhodes, you would love the anime syndicate podcast. Yeah, overpowered oh, characters yeah. like Cody Rhodes yep. that can Hulk out. You can watch the Jujutsu Kaisen episode and talk about whatever the asshole's name with the pink hair and the the demon inside him with <laughs> sticking the yeah. finger, sticking the dead person's dead god's finger in his butthole or I don't know. Hey, you know what? I think that's how Cody Rhodes actually gets his wrestling powers. He sticks <laughs> dead people's fingers in his butthole. I think that's actually what happens. Yeah, and then he... Uh, Eats them after he shits them out and then... And eats them again, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he just, just continues the process over and over again. <laughs> Fuck, man. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You know you know what? I'm going to make this comparison right now. Cody Rhodes is the Jujutsu Kaisen of, of pro wrestling, like, singles major stars. Uh-huh. And the Wyatt Six is the Apothecary Diaries of fucking... <laughs> <laughs> of, of, uh, of stables, all right? God, just... God, God help us all, even though I don't believe in God. Save us from the Wyatt Six. This thing's gonna turn into a real disaster. I'm a fucking Wyatt Six alarmist, dude. Yeah, that's you know what? Rightfully so. Yeah. The Wyatt scare. That's what we need to fucking <laughs> get me out of this. Let fucking Bray Wyatt rest in peace. Stop yeah. milking his death for this travesty of a stable. Please get me out of here. Indeed. All right. Well, anyways, you got anything else? No. All right. If you want to listen to more of our shit, go to GameRageMagazine.com. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok, Game Rage Magazine, Twitter slash X, Game Rage Mag. YouTube, 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 Game Rage Magazine. Go to YouTube. Go to fucking YouTube and do Game Rage Magazine on YouTube. Go to YouTube with all your friends and do Game Rage stuff with all your hood rat friends, all right? That's what you should be doing. Additionally, follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official and go listen to All Gas No Trash. You can also follow Frank at anime underscore syndicate underscore podcast. And you can go listen to the anime syndicate podcast where Frank and Ruben just fucking love all the anime. They love every anime. And I'm here by myself going like, oh, I don't really like this one, guys. I will say this new one that he's got me watching, Bunghole Stray Dogs, is actually pretty decent. I have to say I was quite pleasantly surprised. 
All right. So, anyways, stay tuned for that. That'll be happening uh, next week. We'll be doing that episode. Anyways, that's it for us. Get fucked. If you, listen, you just go fuck yourselves. <laughs> That was another wonderful, amazing, powerful episode of the Game Rage Wrestling Podcast. And take it from me, ladies and gentlemen, the natural lad, Jet Swag. If there's one podcast, one show you should be listening to, that you should be absolutely grateful for, it's the Game Rage Wrestling Podcast. And one of the things you can do to show your appreciation for all the hard work and dedication that these boys put out day in, day out, just for you people. It's that you can go and you can subscribe and you can like and follow them on the Instagram and the TikTok at Game Rage Magazine. You can also follow them and like them and subscribe to them on the old Twitter, which I don't know what it's called now, but who cares? It's at Game Rage Mag there. Additionally, if you feel the need to really show your appreciation, which you should, then go to their website at www.gameragemagazine.com and show us some love. Show them some love. And show some love for the natural lad, Jet Swag. Jet Swag.